Okay, well we're back on the Hoover battery pack issue. Um, now I'm not sure how I left the last video, but um, basically what I did, I got this, and somewhere on it, there's. Um, let me find the other half of it. There we go. Yeah, there is a part number and all the rest of it. Hoover information, warning: do not short circuit, do not open, all the rest of it. Um, so I decided to go online and see if I could get one of these replacement Hoover battery packs. Because I mean these cells, even if you buy them cheap from China, you're looking at five reach at least and there's seven. So you're looking at 35 quid for the cells alone. Then you've got to get the, um, the tags all made up on both sides. You've got to get that done and um, ship in again because it's lithium it's got to be specially shipped you can't just stick it in your normal mail system it's got to go via a carrier so you look at expense there again so all in all you know it's, it's fairly cost prohibitive to, to try and fix that but I um, had a good ring around and um, was directed to a company called Floriet Energies that are based in real up in North Wales. A very nice chap there called um, Andy, Andrew. That's Andrew Clark. And um, he basically, I, I explained the situation. I told him that um, this is being done for a friend. And he, he gave me a cost for it, um, which, which which was okay. It was a fair price, to, to be honest. It wasn't, it wasn't out, out of the out of the ballpark but it's basically it was more than the chap paid for the for the Hoover and probably well in fact you could buy a brand new rechargeable Hoover not quite as powerful but um, for the same price as this battery pack was going to cost so I um, I emailed the chap back and said you know thanks thanks Andrew thanks very much for your help great stuff um, but unfortunately the, the owner did say he didn't want to spend that on it so we would have to sort of knock it on the head so um, then we had a further chat we talked about different solutions um, perhaps using some cheaper cells because he was specifying Sony cells which are really good apparently uh, these are 18650s uh, so we had a chat and um, I explained to him about you know my YouTube channel and he said well well in fact I suggested maybe that um, I could I could uh, perhaps mention what he did and the products he did and he might both do me a deal and uh, he came back and said he would do them complimentary for me so really thumbs up Andrew and Floria Energies a real big help they have sent me which is this package here a new newly made battery pack that I'm gonna fit on this protection circuit here and they've done that as a complimentary for me really as an introduction to, to anyone viewing as well that there is a company out there that will make just one-off battery packs you don't have to order 20 30 they're not extortionately priced in fact I would say it's very reasonably priced um, as I say they also do protection circuits they do charging stuff for it as well so I'll pop a link here on the bottom of the um, screen uh, along here to their website check them out Give the, give the chap a ring, very, very helpful, and um, I couldn't praise him more. So, without further ado, let's um, let's get into it. I did ask him what the sort of typical lifetime of a, a lithium cell is, and in normal use, he reckons about three to four years. And um, again, it's, a, it's an unusual failure on this because we've got this sort of like leakage on the battery. I mean, I'll, I'll go in a little bit closer so you can have a look. But um, we've got this strange. It looks like it, like an old sort of alkaline cell or something that has leaked. And there's something. Certainly, there's a fluid has crept up on certainly that that cell and this one as well. So there's a couple of them. Once we get the battery pack off, we're going to give it a closer, closer examination. But um, anyway, let's get into the actual um, 
pack that Andrew has sent out. So there's various things that could have gone wrong with it. It could have been stored for too long. The batteries have depleted to a stage where they're, they're unable to be recovered. And the protection circuit's just kicking in and stopping them. Okay, so let's get the box out of the way. Let's say this is a one-off battery pack. They don't um, they don't make them specifically for Hoovers. It's it's a prototype that they've put together specially for me. Um, so let's get it open and have a look. See what's inside. It's nicely packaged. Very well wrapped up. a little bit, a bit close there. Yeah. So let's get down a little bit better. So it looks like it's been nicely put together. use all Sony cells for this which apparently is supposed to be one of the best in the market. Um, this is 2600 milliamp hours. Uh, the other one was only 2000 I believe. Let's have a quick look. Yeah the, the other one was two, 2000 milliamps per hour so this should really give us a longer lifetime in theory. He's put some caps on tape at across the top so I don't touch it and short anything out and across the bottom. Um, so yeah there we are, that's that's the next task then. So size wise and orientation they're virtually identical. Yeah, our terminals are all the right way around that way, let's just pop it up the other way. Yeah, that looks really good. That will fit. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to fire the desoldering kit up. We'll get the solder off of the um, old one here. I'll desolder all these tags across the top and the bottom. I have taken some photos so I know which way around it goes. But uh, it does say on it which is positive so this is it, it does say B plus and B minus here and I assume these other connections are just for battery monitoring to monitor the individual cells or individual pairs of cells right I'm going to fire up the desoldering tool so bear with me I'm going to get that taken off okay well that is the first cell off It looks like the best method is um, basically to put some flux on. These should come off a bit easier. Just heat it up. Bit of fresh solder in there. Last one. So there we are. And in underneath is just like a little thermal fuse there. And some more of this double sided sticky stuff so we'll see if I can get the connections on this fuse as well just to make sure that's not gone open circuit 
it might just be a sensor rather than a fuse because nothing written on the board if it is it's been um, gunked over with some yellow stuff so anyway I'm not going to um, bore you by undoing the other side but uh, you basically get the idea I'm just going to desolder the other side and then all we've got is our protection board then got me extractor now which is definitely necessary for this incidentally if this is something that you don't fancy doing yourself they will do all of this for you obviously you would need to send them your old battery pack complete with the protection circuit and they will actually test it on site as well so this is this is going to be a bit hit and miss because obviously I haven't got gear to test all this lot and uh, there's no circuit information I'm not experienced in protection circuits for lithium-ion so uh, I'm just doing this as a say a favor for a friend so uh, it's not something that I tackle all the time so don't start sending me all, all your <laughs> lithium cells to fix okay here we are then batteries are off um, now apparently you've got to be really careful not to short circuit lithium cells so you know if I was to touch those two terminals together I could if this had any charge in it which it doesn't I could um, get a shock and possibly um, damage the batteries I don't know enough about them so don't quote me on all that but um, certainly you do have to be careful with lithium cells so what I'm doing is testing between the positive and negative Point two four of a volt so I mean that is totally dead there's nothing nothing in that Again, I don't think you can dispose of, I'm not sure how you dispose of lithium ion batteries. I think you've got to put them in your normal household. I don't know. Again, <laughs> check your local area out if you need to. Um... So let's have a quick look, see what charge we've got in this one. So this has got. 25.2 volts in it so uh, so let's have a look let's put that to one side and let's have a look at the board that I've just desoldered now I need to just get the um, get the flux off of that so horrible stuff is flux but it does work really well for lead free stuff so I'm just gonna get rid of all the flux Right, next we go over it with some um, solder wick. Just get rid of uh, all the old solder. Just gonna put a little bit of flux on that. Bear with me while the solder and iron warms up. Right, so I've got uh, a bit of flux on my desolder brake, just sort of supercharges it a little bit. I'm going to go and uh, just get rid of any uh, remaining solder on here. So again, on with the fume extractor. I need to turn the iron up for these big ones actually. So we'll give it another hit with some isopropyl, get rid of all that flux knocking about I don't know if we can get this actually off to get into the back of that fuse mm. I don't really 
probably want to take it all off because it's obviously double sided. Double sided tape. I can just, I reckon, just about get my probes in there. Yeah, I can just about get my meter probes in there. So I assume if it is a thermal fuse, it um, it will be short circuit at the moment. Showing any resistance at all. Perhaps it short circuits if it overheats. It could be this coating stuff all over, I suppose. Okay, well it's measuring 9.6k. Um, see if I can get it to change. Could be a thermistor. Put my thumb on it. Yeah, okay, so the resistance is dropping. So it's gone down to 8.7 now. So it is a thermistor. Yeah, that's interesting. So it is a thermistor, that is. So basically, it's um, it's uh, decreasing in resistance as it heats up. So I assume that would then, if it gets to a certain point, it would shut the circuit down if it, if it overheated. Pretty obvious, I suppose. Anyway, let's look at this new pack then. So we're going to lay it so as the um, battery terminals are all in the right position. Need to make sure it's squared up. There, that looks pretty square. Got the minus connected to the minus, plus to the plus. What I think first of all is I'll join these little ones on first. And we'll snip the ends off. Just for neatness. Do this side first. Make sure we're keeping central. Okay, I'm happy with that. Actually, now let's put the other flux on. This stuff is um, stays put a bit better. So 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to solder them, then I'm just going to give them a bit of extra heat and um, I'm going to use leaded solder rather than lead free because it flows better. Okay, that looks fine actually. Let's do this side as well. I'll just snip that one off before because that's. Uh, let's do this side. We'll snip that off first because otherwise it will short onto those other connectors. Contact. Okay, so same again, blob of, blob of flux on each, stick the old fume extractor on. There we go, so that's all the intermediate batteries on. Just a case of connecting the positive and negative now. So let's uh, expose the positive. A little screwdriver now. Right? So I just hold the edge of that as I solder it, really. Okay, finally the negative. Make sure everything's nice and flush. Right, that looks good. 
So now that we're connected back up, let's have a look to see if we've got that voltage on the positive and negative. Okay, just a quick come clear up of the bench, just nothing's going to short this out. So let's have a look now what we've got on positive and negative here. And there we have 23 point. Oops. Let's just do it in the plug, it's easier than that. Twenty three point one eight volts look with it in circuit. So what I've got to do now then is just uh, get rid of all the flux and muck on this and I can reassemble it back into the into circuit and see if the charging circuit works. So bear with me. Okay, well that's the battery pack all cleaned up now. Um, what I'm going to do, again I spoke to Andrew Floria Energies, this isn't 100% necessary because he's put Capton tape on here, but the manufacturer did um, put this on so uh, I'm going to just re-stick this over, still pretty sticky, I peeled it off really carefully in case I did need to reuse it. So I'm just putting these back on. You can see the capped on tape underneath there, which um, is good stuff. Actually, I must, I haven't got any. I, I had some in my basket, my shopping basket, on one of the Chinese, well, AliExpress actually. Just uh, haven't got around to checking it out yet. I must, um, must get some. So, yeah, just putting those back on top. Just as extra added protection, I suppose. So let me get the Hoover back up and we'll temporarily connect it, see what happens. So what we're checking for is that it's charging. So I did take the charging board out before, which is here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the power supply. And we're going to be looking for this, um, this part here. It's got to light up to show the battery condition and also it should, I believe, I think this flashes while it's charging. Let's see what happens. There we go, so it is charging. Which is good news. Before it was just staying constant all the time. So let's just monitor the voltage going in there. Let's get you up. What I'm going to do is measure uh, across the positive and negative on the actual battery pack here. So let me get you on the multimeter. So I'm just going to go across the positive and negative. Make sure I'm on voltage, which I am. So we've got 25.46. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave that on for a while. I'm going to leave it on for a while and uh, we'll see if, um, if it charges up. Okay, that's the battery back in its little housing. I did um, label up all the um, packs when I put it away. So I knew uh, what screws went where because there's a lot of screws in this. Okay, getting there slowly but surely. Um, this circuit board has got this protective cover over it. Make sure it's all in properly, it's all clipped in. This is. Again, just double sided tape. Stop anything shorting out on it, I suppose. It's got a little rubber buffer on the battery as well, so that's all installed. So what we need to do now is get the um, handle clipped in. To be honest, now we're this far, we should be able to put it back together. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll put it back together 
because um, it's going to be really difficult trying to get the handle on it and hold it and stop all this falling apart. So we need to get the um, cable clip. There's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze to get it all back together. So bear with me. I'm going to get it put back together and join me in a minute and we'll have the handle and everything on it for a test. Well, I'm going to carry on and put this back together. Um, let's say the hardest part of getting this handle apart was getting this bezel out of here. It just it cl obviously clips in but it just would not come out. I mean I haven't broken it but um, it did take some levering to get that out. Let's say this if you're ever taking one of these apart there's five tabs on it. So there's two down near the bottom, two up near the top, and then there's one at the very top here. You can see the holes that the corresponding holes are going to. But yeah, that was a cake to get off. Okay, so there we are, everything. So this is the um, dust collector and fil there's a filter in there as well. Handle, body, and the power brush. Now, as you can see, the battery is still charging. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it plugged in, I believe, let's have a quick look in the instructions, uh, see what it says about charging, charge indicator, when it's charging the battery icon will flash every two seconds, when fully charged it um, stops flashing and remains lit while the charger is plugged in and the icon switches off when the cleaner is in use. And these other lights apparently only light in the carpet settings. There's two settings on the handle, floor and carpet, and turbo. So there we are. That's pretty much it for now. I'm going to wait till it charges up and then we're going to give it a test. Okay, well I waffled on earlier about um, recycling these batteries or disposing of them. Um, apparently they, they are uh, less hazardous to the environment than normal batteries, um, but because of the nature of them it's um, it's it's best that they get recycled properly. So this um this little site here, which is erp-recycling.org, um, this basically it's got like a little recycling locator on it. So if you click that, um, it tells you what you can put in your recycling at home, where to recycle a specific item. So let's go on that one. We'll go with batteries and continue. So I'm going to let it use my current location. So here we've got a load of um, places that I can actually recycle these and one of them is uh, Travis Perkins which is literally one mile up the road for me so that's brilliant news. I should just take them up Travis Perkins and dump them in their recycle bin. Um, as I say, you need to check in your own local area, but there's loads and loads of places to take them at. Lidl's, Co-op, normal recycling centres, Poundland, Plum Centre, Spa, Smith's, Co-op. So yeah, it looks like most Co-ops take them. Dunelm, loads. So yeah, that was interesting for me to find out. Hopefully that was of use to you. Okay, well you'll see I've got the Hoover all assembled now in my in my um, workroom. Got the bottom brush on, handles all on. All I'm waiting for now is for the little light to stop flashing. Um, and once that stop fl stops flashing, then we're in business. Well, I've been out and done a bit of shopping. Come back and we have a solid blue light. So that means it's charged. Let's see if I can get, apologies for the shaky cam. Oops. Right. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna unplug the charger. And this is the first time this has ever been used. So um, let's get you down at the business end. Let's sweep my messy carpet floor, hopefully.
wondering why the um, why the brush wasn't going round. The reason was I had it in floor mode. Look, you even got lights. You can see by the indicators here that we've got a full charge. So that is brilliant news. Thumbs up even. Let's um, give it a go on turbo. Well, that, as they say, is a done job. Apologies for the mess in the background, that's just my usual pile of to-do stuff. So, the Hoover unplugged, 25.2 volt lithium, is alive. As I say, it's... Um, it's not a bad bit of kit to be fair, I think it's uh, it's going to work well. And, and picked a lot up there because it's not really a lot of dust up, up in here. <laughs> Plus I did it the other day so uh, you wouldn't believe it but yeah that's um, that's turned out really well. So once again it's um, thanks to Andrew at Floria Energies Limited, who has supplied me that battery totally free of charge, so as we can make this video and give my mate his Hoover back. So thanks again, Andrew. If you like that, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and feel free to make any comments. I'll include all the information you need for Flora Energies. If you do want some battery packs made up, definitely recommended. Bye for now.